So you want to break into data analytics or data science, and everyone keeps telling you to learn SQL. You Google learn SQL and see literally hundreds of courses, books, and YouTube tutorials, and end up even more confused than ever. The thing about SQL is it's actually pretty straightforward to learn, but it's also one of the most commonly failed skills in data interviews. The problem isn't SQL itself. It's that most people learn it the wrong way. They watch tutorials, maybe do a few exercises, and think they're ready. Then they sit down in an interview and realize they can't actually solve the problems in front of them. Today, I'm breaking down how to actually learn SQL the right way, the way that'll get you through interviews and make you feel confident on the job from day one. Let's start with the basics so we're all on the same page. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It's basically the programming language we use to talk to databases. It's actually pretty intuitive, at least at the beginning. Select star from users table where sign up date is greater than 2.2024.0101. You're literally saying, hey database, give me all of the users who signed up after January 1st, 2024. It's pretty much English just with some keywords thrown in. So if it's that straightforward, you're probably thinking AI can just do this for us, so what's the point? Surprisingly, AI kind of sucks at SQL. I work on machine learning problems at Amazon, and in my experience, AI for SQL is far behind AI for Python, for example. The reason is all of the non-code things that are so important for data jobs, like understanding the quirks in the data set or what to do when the documentation is outdated. Often you need to be able to actually look at the data, ask questions, understand edge cases, and validate your results. AI can help you with syntax, but it can't replace understanding what you're doing. So SQL is important once you're on the job, but it's also make or break for data interviews. And the SQL questions you'll face in interviews are way harder than anything you see in beginner tutorials. Okay, so what do you actually need to know? Here's your roadmap of everything you need to get a job and do well once you're hired. Phase one is the fundamentals. Start with basic concepts like select, from, where, and having. These are the fundamentals you'll use in basically every query. Next, learn about joins. These are the different ways to combine data from multiple tables. You need to really understand the differences between inner, left, right, full outer, cross joins, and when to use each one. Often you'll want to calculate aggregates, like the average value of a column, and you'll need to use group by for that. And then you might want to sort your data using order by and select only the first couple rows using limit. This is your foundation, and honestly, this covers about 60% of what you'll do in your day-to-day. -day. At this point, you're ready to move on to phase two, intermediate skills. Start with subqueries, which are basically queries inside queries. Then move on to common table expressions, or CTEs, which are an alternative to subqueries that make your queries more readable. Case statements are used for conditional logic in SQL, and date functions are important because you'll be working with time series data regularly. Finally, let's talk about the advanced stuff. These are the interview killers. Phase three, advanced. The main thing here are window functions. This is the most important advanced topic. You need to know how to work with row number, rank, dense rank, lead, lag, running totals, and moving averages. It's also good to understand self-joins, or joining a table to itself, and complex multi-step problems that require combining everything you've learned so far. That's it. If you're a SQL expert, you may notice that I skipped really advanced topics. Things like recursive queries, user-defined functions, stored procedures, database design, and indexing strategies are great to learn on the job if you need them, but they're not critical for interviews or most day-to-day -day data science or data analytics work. Your goal is to be absolutely fluent with everything through window functions. That's really the bar. All right, so how do you actually do this? My recommendation at the beginning is to pick one resource and stick with it. This will help you make sure you don't miss any concepts that build on each other. In my opinion, DataCamp is one of the best ways to learn SQL. I've used DataCamp myself, and what really sets them apart is how interactive and hands-on their platform is. You're not just watching videos, you're actually coding and getting instant feedback from the get-go. For anyone just starting out, their SQL fundamentals track is a great foundation. It covers everything from querying basics up to window functions and Postgres SQL features, so you'll be ready to tackle real-world analytics tasks. If you want to go deeper into skills you'll need on the job, the Associate Data Analyst in SQL track builds on these core skills with courses on data data cleaning, exploratory analysis, and data-driven decision-making. Both tracks prepare you for DataCamp SQL Associate Certification. If you're interested in getting a credential, you can add to your resume. If you're serious about learning SQL fast, I definitely recommend checking out DataCamp. Thank you so much to DataCamp for sponsoring this video. Once you have the skills, you need to practice. Actually applying what you learned so you can solve hard problems under pressure in an interview is really important. Here's the practice structure I recommend. In weeks one to two, focus on the basics. Practice again that select, from, where, joins, and group by. Do three to five practice problems every day. Focus on understanding, not speed. 
In weeks three to four, focus on intermediate things like subqueries, CTEs, case statements, and date functions. Keep doing three to five problems every day. And at this point, you can also start timing yourself. But the goal is still completion, not perfection or speed. In weeks five to six, you're working on advanced things. So window functions and make sure to spend extra time here. Do two to three harder problems every day. Now at this point, you should be optimizing for both correctness and speed. In week seven and beyond, you can work on interview prep. Move to platforms like LeetCode, Data Lemur, or HackerRank. Start with easy problems, move to medium, then hard. Simulate interview conditions by setting a timer and not looking up syntax. Passive learning will give you some retention, but only about 20%. Active learning, where you're actually writing code yourself, gives you 75 to 90% retention. So once you're done with one course, spend most of your time practicing. We already talked about doing a couple of problems a day, but here's a step-by-step -step on how to practice those problems effectively. First, get a problem. Start with something slightly harder than what you're comfortable with. Spend five to 10 minutes trying to solve it. Don't look at any solutions or get AI help. If you're stuck, look at one hint, but not the full solution. Try again for another five to 10 minutes. Then at that point, look at the solution, even if you got it right. After that, rewrite the solution from scratch without looking. This step is really important. And finally, explain out loud what each part does. If you can't explain it, you don't fully understand it and you probably won't retain it. As extra credit, create a variation of the problem. Change the requirements slightly and solve it again. This process feels slow because it is, but it's how you build actual fluency instead of just surface level understanding that will fall apart under interview pressure. One really important thing to remember is that SQL isn't just about writing syntactically correct queries. It's about understanding the data and the business question. When someone asks you to find the top 10 customers by revenue, the SQL part is pretty easy. But the real questions are, what counts as revenue? Gross or net? What time period are we looking at? Do we include refunded transactions? What if a customer has multiple accounts? How do we handle null values? The query is the easy part once you know what you're solving for. This is why practice with real world messy data sets matters. Clean tutorial data doesn't fully prepare you for actual data where you'll have duplicates you need to handle, nulls that mean different things in different columns, the same customer recorded five different ways, timestamps in three different time zones, or data that got updated halfway through the period you're analyzing. Great SQL means asking the right questions before you write the query. Understanding your data deeply and validating your results to make sure they actually make sense go so far. SQL is one of the highest ROI skills you can learn for data jobs. It's required for basically every data role, and you can be pretty sure to see some hard problems in interviews, but it's also totally doable with the right mindset and learning plan. The other core programming language for data analytics and data science is Python. I have a roadmap on how to learn that as well. Check it out up next. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.